Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanna to take a quick look at how we can trade and work at the same time, whether it's a full-time job or a part-time job. So before we get going, hit that subscribe button, give the video a nice big thumbs up, and comment down below if you're able to trade and work at the same time. So a few months ago, I lost my main job, and at the time it was a bit of a devastating blow, but I thought, okay, I'm funded at FTMO, I better trade that as well as other investments, and still be able to survive, which I've managed to do. But always in the back of my mind, I always knew that that wasn't my goal at that time and I wanted to be at least working for another year or so to get some more savings and some more money behind me for going full time and giving up work completely. I think that's one of the reasons as well, although I've taken additional challenges with FTMO and other prop firms during that time, I wasn't able to complete all of them. I've got the retakes, so I'm actually continuing with them, but wasn't able to add to my funded account, which is a real shame and a bit of a letdown for me. But luckily, I am now back at work, started a job this week, so I'm able to do that, and I'm working from home, which is pretty good for the time being, and allows me to sit in front of the screens and watch the charts and wait for the trades to come to me, rather than try and shoehorn my routine around when I wanted or think that the trades are gonna be working and the charts setting up for me. Now, a lot of people think that being a full-time trader means you're sitting in front of the screens for eight, 10, 12 hours a day, literally looking at every single chart, every single price movement up and down. The reality is it's not like that. The more successful I've been in the past is the less screen time I've put in place. It's around the analysis correct and setting up the correct trades and waiting for the trades to happen rather than being there all time trying to trade every single thing at every single moment. So now I'm going to talk through a few scenarios of type of works you might be doing that allows you to trade or what type of trade strategies you might have to employ to be able to trade and work at the same time. So firstly, if you're a driver, so HGV, courier, you cannot trade and work. Concentrate on driving and being safe. So the three scenarios that I see this as, uh, being able to work from home, either full-time or part-time, and have access to your works computer and laptop, as well as having your main trading platforms and setup as well. There's also working in an office-based, where you have access to IT equipment. And there's obviously the third scenario, which is, being at work, but no access to IT equipment, but you may have a phone with you. Okay, so under current guidelines, especially in the UK, everyone's still encouraged to work from home, which is quite nice if you're trying to trade as well. And I would say work your day around that as well. So let's say you're starting work at nine o'clock, do some analysis at 7.30, eight o'clock, because some trades can be setting up pre-market or as the market's open. And then you'll be able to see the screens on your desk and be able to wait for something to happen later in the day, either a trade triggering, or you've got to see a pattern forming or a trend forming throughout the day and get in on a trade. So when we're working from home, we're also encouraged to take regular breaks, whether it is every hour, get up away from the screen, at least if stretch your legs, or lunch breaks, get out as well. So whether you're able to incorporate some of that time away from your work laptops and do some bit of trading analysis at that point, that's obviously definitely something to consider. So our second scenario is if you are office-based and you're working on IT equipment, and obviously it covers a vast range of jobs. Now in this situation, a lot of people working at desks have multiple screens, and therefore if you are able to have this and not blocked, have trading view on one screen and obviously other things on the other screen, you're able to then see the charting software, see what analysis you've done prior to that, whether the support and resistance zones are coming to a place, and therefore you either place orders on your phone or whether you've done it at the end of the day, you can obviously manage the trades and if they've triggered, manage them on your phone as well. A lot of companies will actually block uh, trading software or spread betting sites because they see this as gambling and therefore it could be blocked by your internet servers. But TradingView, I believe, gets through most of them. So I would suggest doing a lot of the analysis either pre-work, so seven, eight o'clock in the morning before you're at the office, or in the evening when it's a bit more relaxed, maybe nine, 10 o'clock at night, you're able to do all the analysis, as they draw all your trend lines, support and resistance zones, all on the charts. And because TradingView especially working in Chrome, if you're able to log in on another browser, that will all transfer itself with the actual logon. So all that analysis you won't lose and it'll be ready to place a trade straight away as soon as you get to the office. What I would say though is do not breach any of your IT policies or your working policies at work. If you have a very restrictive policy on IT, if you're in a very much of a secure environment and let's say you can't use certain websites, do not go out of your way to break that. If you are restricted policies on using phones at desks or in a secure area, for example, don't be on your phone all the time and being sort of told off for that and getting a warning. Make sure you do everything in your power to do your day job first. And if there's any downtime, then look at the trading. Don't be trading first, job second. So if you're in a job that has very limited access to IT equipment and you don't have that as part of your day job, whether it's in the hospitality sector or building, for example, 
you can still do your analysis at the end of the day. And that's what I'd recommend doing, becoming an end of day or a swing trader. Now swing trading, typically we think about that as being a three to a 14 day sort of trade cycle, but you can actually reduce that down depending on what time frames you use. If you're looking at doing your setups on a one hour or four hour chart, then they could actually be set up in the morning or the evening. And therefore that could actually only last for one or two days, example. So you can get some still very, very good returns by trading end of day or just in the morning sessions with some triggers or some um, orders set up, for example, you can still get that one or 2% quite easily. And often that actually plays as an advantage because you're not actually looking at the charts, you're not actually getting emotionally involved. You've done the analysis, you've set the trade up, you've walked away, it's gonna come off or it's not. Now most of the times it may or may not trigger, but when you're in the trade, you have a much greater success of probably seeing it through and not being attached with the emotions. So I think we can see no matter what job we're at the moment is we're still able to trade and make potentially good returns from trading even if we are not able to do it full time. Now I'd say with everything in our journeys and our plans, that's our ultimate game is to become full time traders and give up the day job. That's definitely my objective completely. So hopefully you've got that same mindset and you're able to do as much trading as you can, as much analysis and be as risk adverse as possible, but obviously make sure that when the trades set up and they come along, you're in them straight away. Comment down below what you think about trading at work, if it's possible for you, and let me know any other ideas you've got for other videos. See you all soon, cheers.